friends if I got fooled or if I was a fool well you'll help me decide that but today I got a knife review and actually I got two knives in today now this buck even though this package is pretty small here there's a pretty big knife stuffed in that box but you know what that's going to be for the next video today I'm excited about opening up this knife here now I went searching for American made traditional knives alright one of my last videos was a CJRB and I got a little slack for doing a Chinese knife so I went searching I googled American knife companies American traditional knife companies and I came up with Rosecraft alright so I went on their website and looked and I saw a knife on there I really liked and check this out he personalized signed invoice that's pretty cool so here's some of their tactical looking knives all right a little information about the company what was started all that you can pause and read that later if you want veteran owned okay that's the distributor rosecraft blades I think the distributor and rosecraft blades are all in one there's some of their models all right so let's go ahead and get this one unboxed and see what we're getting into that's a pretty nice looking box pretty good looking quality so I'm excited to get into this one but before we do please take a moment to subscribe to the channel like this video and share it with any of your friends who might like similar knife content that's what keeps the channel going thank you all right so let's get this thing unboxed first of all what do we have here it is a RCT 005 clinch river swayback now I've seen these a few times on some shorts oh what is that China this is supposed to be American made here it is again look at that China huh well hopefully it's just a box because this is supposed to be an American knife company alright moving forward alright it's wrapped up like a case knife well that's that looks good and oh man that is one pretty knife isn't it look at those bone covers now that's supposed to be a nickel shield on there nickel pins the bolsters are just steel the liners are just steel so we definitely gonna want to keep this one coated it's also got D2 steel blade but it is good looking now look at this now that's there's no and scrub in that or anything it's just a plain bolster there it's got a good walk and talk that's for sure man that thing is crisp and nice did a good job on that let's check out this blade check out the swedge yeah, let's take a better look all right so that is it's just angled it's not rounded it's just well beveled it's a beveled swedge see it's not rounded or smooth it's just got a bevel cut into it big old nail neck right there very straight blade worn clip big old choil half of it's in the blade half of it's in the handle rosewood blades in the tang everything's smooth don't feel any high boy that's a nice feeling knife in the hand that's for sure very convenient man I'm gonna like using this knife but before we go any further let's go ahead and get it coated down all my new knives I like to take my one angry kid knife oil and get a really good coat all over the entire blade scales you know get some on the back here get the springs coated all that just get let this stuff get in there and get worked up in all those little nooks and crannies and also get some in the pivot point because 
not only is it a great protectant, it is a very, very good lubricant. All right. And just wipe off all the excess after it sits for a few minutes. And uh, most of the time you can notice a pretty big difference. It brightens up the scales and cleans up the action. It smells good too. Damn it. Right on the blade. China. What is going on with that? Alright, so this is not an American made knife for sure now. That's a sticker. That'll come off. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, they said they were an American knife company. I stopped there for a minute and I looked at their website. And if I would have kept reading, it does say that they source their materials and some of their knives from other countries and that they're working on making their knives in the States. But, you know what? If I would have read it, I would have known. So, uh, I can't blame them. They didn't try to deceive me. I just didn't do my thorough reading before I bought the knife. Alright, so it is D2 steel. I don't know what that RC... Oh, that's the part number there. But this is a, a nice knife. I mean, it's got a great feel in the hand. This thing would really cut open some boxes great. That edge there, that's the one I ripped. And here's another knife that felt very sharp when I put my finger on it, but I don't want to cut that great. So let's let's get a few passes on old trusty here. And uh, see if we can clean it up, make this thing slice like it looks like it should. You know, that's up to you. It's, it's a Chinese knife. You know, a lot of people don't want anything to do. They say, oh, it's a communist knife. And it's a pretty good deal. If this was made in America. You know, I was really surprised I got this knife for 50-some bucks. This was an American-made knife with the looks and everything on it. Um, you know, I think it could go for 100 I think that shield that's on there that nothing's engraved in. A little bit of a waste of space. There we go. It's cutting a little better now. I hit a little oil spot there. Let me get a fresh piece. Alright. Let's see what it'll do. Not quite right, is it? Alright. Not quite right. Well, we might have to reprofile this knife like I just did in my last video with my sod busters. Should check out that video. How to degree the bevel on your knife. Pretty cool. Check it out. Alright, well this one here, we got to go back to this drop for a minute. Let's see if we can correct it here. And, uh... I'm not used to doing a perfectly straight worn cliff like this. So I gotta make sure I'm doing the proper follow up and angle on it. And one thing I like to do, if it gives me some problem, I like to run it right along the edge here, the edge of the leather, and actually hit that wood a little bit. I know some people use balsa wood to strop their knife. I've never done that. But I have done that little trick you just seen me do right there. And let's see if it did any good. Sure did. Looks like that did the trick, huh? Alright, so I'll look into that balsa wood. And uh, if I find anything good on it, I'll do a video. Alright, so back to this knife here. It's a knife review, so we got to do some comparisons. All right, so here's a Sodbuster Junior. You can see it's just a little bit bigger than the Sodbuster Junior, if you're familiar with that knife. All right, and let's go ahead and put a large Sodbuster on top of it. So it really kind of fits, kind of in between. Different shaped knife, different use. All right, Sodbusters have that big belly that. 
Clinch River has that um, Warren Cliff blade. And I'm just putting some other knives. Here's a bench made tagged out. All right, let's move that. Got to have the paramilitary too. Let's get that in there. Try to put that in every video. Okay, because that's old faithful. I have that knife longer than any other knives I got. And it is one great knife. All right, so back to the Rosecraft Clinch River Swayback. Yeah, it is a beautiful knife. I mean, I was uh, mesmerized by it when I was looking, when I was shopping. It's got a great walk and talk. Look at that. All right, you're not going to open up one hand, but you can definitely close it one hand. And in the hand, it is just a great feeling knife. That choil's perfect. Keeps you from cutting your hand when you go to close it. It's only fifty four ninety nine, four ninety nine shipping. Look at that, fifty nine ninety nine, under sixty bucks. Like I said, but if it was American made, it, I think people'd be willing to pay a hundred bucks for a knife like this. But gotta get rid of that shield. That um, that plain shield. That should be a skull and crossbones or something a little cooler maybe a spider or I don't know something but uh alright let's get some dimensions I don't have my ruler I can't find it but we can use this so we got a a blade that's just a little over three inches probably 3.10 it's got a cutting edge of about two and a half and let's see here one two three one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About seven and a quarter inches overall. And, uh, handle, one, two, three, four. Right at four. Maybe just a hair over four inches on the handle. But don't forget that front finger choil right there. And that's what really makes this knife. That front finger choil. That sway back handle, that nice Warren Cliff blade. So you decide. You decide. Did I do good buying this knife? Did I get fooled? I don't think so. I think it's a good deal. I just wish it was American made. So, nothing wrong with Rosecraft. They're doing what they can, but you know, try to get them moved over to American production. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share it to your friends. Thank you.